Well, hello, ladies and gents, Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, and today, I'm coming at you with another AMA. But first, let's roll the intro. All right, today's question is brought to us from Melanie, and she asks, how do you keep your mindset right? You and Crystal have been rock-solid keto for so many years without allowing yourselves to have any cheats. How do I get that same mindset? P.S. Love you all. All right, so I love this question. First of all, let me start with a couple underlying foundational baseline beliefs. All right, so I believe that being strict keto is healthier than having intermittent, you know, carb-laden meals, having cheat days. Like, I truly believe from a strict biology standpoint that being strict keto is better for me physically than, like, from a purely biological nutritional standpoint than not, all right? That's what I believe to be optimal, all right? So since I have that underlying nutritional belief, it makes sticking to strict keto much easier. But now I'm going to start talking about the mindset aspect of it because that's pretty much, I think, where your question was geared. So I like doing hard things. I like being very disciplined. I like being very strict. I like being very structured. I like strict keto because it is all of those things, all right? Um, I struggle with eating disorders a lot in the past. I I feel like some people operate better in a moderation standpoint, and I feel like some people operate better from an elimination standpoint. When I was struggling with the eating disorders, just removing those addictive substances altogether was much better for me. I don't have those disordered eating habits any longer, so I feel like I could introduce carbs back into my diet and be totally fine from a mental psychological standpoint um, and I could, I could be totally fine from a physical standpoint because my body is very insulin sensitive and I could handle those carbs. But again, like I said earlier, I don't think that is optimal from a nutritional biological standpoint. But going back to the mindset aspect of it, I, I've been strict keto for so long now that it's kind of become my identity. And I don't want that to be misconstrued into dogma by any means, but I do think dogmatic thinking is, is very bad. It's, it's, it doesn't leave you with an open mind so you're able to grow. And I consider myself a very open-minded person. I don't think I'm dogmatic with regard to strict keto. I think I am disciplined with regard to strict keto. Uh, so because I think it's better and optimal from a nutritional standpoint, it makes it easier for me to wrap my head around, okay, since I know this is optimal, I don't have near as much trouble veering from that. Like if, if I, if I, how could I make an analogy here? Let's just say that drinking alcohol was good for you. It's not, but let's just assume that it was good for you. Yet you're a recovering alcoholic, all right? And you, you know that you over drink and that's not good. A little bit is, is good under this assumption, but a whole lot is bad, all right? If you think and you believe because of the wisdom that, that be, that having some alcohol is good for you, you're going to think that in order to be optimal, you need to have that little bit of alcohol. And you're going to struggle with flirting that line and not going overboard. Since I believe that strict keto is optimal and I don't need the carbs, it's much easier for me to not be tempted by wanting to try and incorporate them. And a lot of people use carbs, that they, they tend to, to go to carbs and just other addictive, addictive substances when they're very stressed, um, when they have a lot of anxiety, and during like social gatherings, all right? So let me tackle each of those. When I'm very stressed, rather than kind of throwing my hands up and, and going for comfort things, I tend to double down on the things that I know work really well. Because once I get some momentum going on something that's working really well, I'm likely going to have less stress, all right? So for me, that's always been nutrition and training. No matter how crazy my life is, as long as I've got my nutrition dialed in and my training dialed in, I'm able to recover from the stressors that be. So by staying strict keto, which I believe to be healthier, that's just one less thing that's going to contribute to my stress, all right? From like a family social gathering standpoint, a lot of people try to justify going off, having, you know, cake at a wedding 
or, you know, a bunch of pecan pie at Thanksgiving as this, you know, you only live life once, go ahead and indulge a little bit type of justification process, which I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like, that's not what it does for me. Um, I love ketogenic foods. Like, from a flavor standpoint, I don't feel like I'm missing out at all by not having those ketogenic foods uh, or by, by not having those carb laden foods. I don't feel like regular cake tastes any better than keto cake. Maybe it's because I've been keto for so long that I've forgotten how good regular cake tastes, but I don't feel like I'm missing anything from a flavor standpoint. From a relationship standpoint, I don't view the foods that are on my plate. Like, we'll just use Thanksgiving as an example because that's this week. Um, a lot of people treat Thanksgiving like this this hallowed thing, but then they, they celebrate the food oftentimes more so than the, the camaraderie, more so than the people across the table from them. Rather than focusing on the people across the table, they're focusing on the food on their plate. And they'll justify they'll use that to justify eating that food because it's like this family event that happens only once a year. You might as well live a little. To me, that's just a distraction. Whenever I've eaten carbs in the past at Thanksgiving, like I'm I'm like feeding frenzy mode on the food, then I feel like crap after the meal. I wind up falling asleep on taking a nap on the couch after the, the Thanksgiving dinner's over, and I'm not even spending time with my loved ones. Now, I don't do that. I eat foods that I know are gonna fuel my body, make me more in moment, in the moment, in tune with my surroundings, present for my loved ones, and my relationship with them is not dependent on the food on my plate. I feel like if that's the case, if the, the quality of your relationship is dependent on the food you're eating, then you probably should work on that relationship first and foremost because it should never be dependent on the food that you're putting in your mouth. So for me and Crystal, we've been strict keto for a long time. I've been six years now, I believe. She's coming up on five years. It's like it's become our identity in a good way, I believe. People look to us for inspiration and motivation for staying strict keto. And because I believe in the strict keto lifestyle, it's very easy for me to maintain that lifestyle and hopefully be a sense of inspiration to those people that would not tolerate carbs very well from an insulin resistance standpoint or from a psychological standpoint. So it's become my identity. I believe it to be healthier biologically, simply from like an unbiased standpoint. That's what I truly believe from a nutritional uh, standpoint. Um, and from a psychological standpoint, I just feel like it's more in line with who I am as a person. I feel like the long game, disciplined uh, approach is better with strict keto. I just feel like everything is is heightened and intensified and amplified and optimized with strict keto for me. Again, that's that's me personally. That's Crystal. Uh, Crystal's got some health, like digestive issues that, that do much better with a strict keto approach than trying to incorporate carbs. So she's got that as a reason as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much why we are the way we are with it. And hopefully that answers your question. You asked for chocolate malt bricks. We've got some chocolate malt bricks headed your way. Thank you for all that you do and the question you provided. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you next time.